one of the first questions that we get asked by people on selling on the Amazon marketplace is what business structures do they have? And the answer is different for everyone depending on their own individual circumstances. When we look at the most appropriate structure for someone, we examine personal profile, a marriage of single, you have dependents. The reason being is so we can examine whether we can use the lower marginal tax rates and, and tax free thresholds of your spouse and children. There's no point in setting up a complex arrangement of, say, discretionary trusts if there's no one to actually distribute the income for to other than um, yourself. So we look at your income. Have you got income from wages or businesses or other sources? If you already have an income of over 37000 we, in which case we may need to think about a company to limit the tax rate to 30% or it's about to drop to 28.5% in the 2016 year. We'll also look at the growth of your business and the expected profits. So uh, how much profit do we expect do you expect to earn this year and how much is it going to be next year? Do we need to change the business structure now? We look at your, your assets and what assets do you have and what do we want to protect from any potential liabilities right, arising from your new business. An uh, example could be your own home or investment property or shares. And we look at the risks of your business and the products you're selling. Are the products you're selling likely to result in, in litigation from uh, trademarks to personal injury to product liability? Are you selling a product for consumption like supplements? Is there a risk that you could be sued for personal injury or product liability? Is your product likely to infringe on the trademarks of others? For example, Teespring investigated for selling Anzac t-shirts without a license from the RSL. Trademark infringement litigation is expensive, but no one's going to sue a $2 company. So having a company and structure in place is, is like a, a form of insurance for that company. What stage of your business you're up to? I mean, no sales, just testing the market, or have, have you got a, a proven concept and sales are flowing through? Plus, what do you plan on doing with this business, keeping it for cash flow and lifestyle, building it up and selling it, or bringing in outside investment, investors? And how Do you have any partners? Is it just... Is it just you doing it alone or is it you and your spouse or is it two un, more than two unrelated parties? And then we look at the, the cash flow and working with capital requirements of your business. Are you going to have to reinvest your profits into the business and therefore we want a, a lower tax rate as, as possible? We also look at the tax effectiveness and the flexibility of, of different structures. We want a structure that's flexible to achieve your aims, given your personal profile, income, assets, and risk. We also look at the, the nature of your customers and suppliers. I mean, for example, uh, PayPal didn't allow trusts for a, quite a long time. I think they're still uh, they're starting to allow trusts now, but it's um, somewhat difficult in terms of PayPal, PayPal could cut off your, your um, account if they found you were running with a trust. I mean, partnerships of trusts were, exact, were popular for a while, but they were commercially unviable for, for the single purpose of getting a, a, a tax benefit on capital gains tax when or if it's sold. The, the problem was the structure itself was so limiting it would prevent the business from growing enough to be sold for an amount that would ever benefit from the tax benefit. It was, it was like a one in a hundred or even a, a one in a thousand chance that something was going to occur. And they put in place this complex structure of, I've seen this happen a number of times and the partnership of trust means they were never able to get a government contract or uh, yeah, dealing with big companies, they would, wouldn't would deal with a partnership of trusts. They don't even deal with companies. We're also looking at the, the administrative ease of operations. There's a no point in creating a complex structure if it is administratively burdensome or that the owners didn't have the discipline or the support staff to run it properly. We've seen some things in with self-managed super funds and building de developments that are so complex that are very easy to get the uh, transactions in the wrong order and risk massive penalties. We've seen trademarks and intellectual property put into separate entities and two years down the track, no one can tell me what the, the trademarks or the intellectual property actually was. 
We also look at the, the present situation in, in terms of taxation situation. Have you got any tax losses that we may need to, to look at? One of the main objectives of a corporate structure is to, to quarantine risk and protect assets, but there's more. So the main objectives we're looking at when we look at your corporate structure are asset protection, tax efficiency, commercial sensibility and viability, and administratively simple. The right structure is the most effective and long-lasting tax strategy you can put in place. Often we can put in place structures, corporate structures, that save ten or twenty thousand or thirty thousand dollars a year in tax, not just one year, but every year going forward. And these are not deductions where you spend one hundred dollars and you get forty nine dollars back. It's just twenty thousand dollars or thirty thousand dollars every year just through having the right structure. So let's look at one of the most common questions that we get from people selling on Amazon, especially from Australians, is do I need an LLC? And the simple answer for most people, especially if they're Australian residents and not US residents, is no. The reason is you don't have a permanent establishment in the US. A permanent establishment is a fixed place of business and includes an office, a warehouse or a factory. But even a warehouse for holding and the dispatch of stock for sale is excluded. Plus, with Amazon, it's not your warehouse. You don't lease or own it. And running an Amazon business, you don't have an office in the US. You don't have a warehouse in the US. In terms of you don't own a warehouse in the US. You don't have employees. You may have subcontractors, but you don't have employees in the US. And you haven't got an agent in the US. Um, Amazon is not your agent. The only... Uh, in the Amazon policy in terms of conditions is the only thing that they're an agent for is the collection of funds through the merchant facility. A quick point, just because the profits are in a US bank or in US dollars doesn't mean you don't have to declare it in Australia. It is accessible income to you as soon as Amazon pays it, even if it's to a Pioneer or a World First account. So you don't need a, a US entity like a, an LLC. And some people come to me, oh, 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 there's some tax benefits in doing it because the tax rates are, are lower. If you've had a look at even the state taxes in the US, it is a complete nightmare. But generally, international tax is complicated and expensive. If you've got spare millions that you're not spending, then you could think about it. The, the other thing is, the problem with a lot of these overseas structures, as soon as you try and spend the money, it's a problem because that's where you get caught. If you, if, you, if you want to Google Project Wickenby and see how people who have tried to embark on some international tax things have ended up in jail. So let's look at over the, the different structures that are available. So the first one is sole traders. That's where you're just trading in your own name. This is good for people who are just getting started. but They might be at the, the product source testing stage, but no sales. They don't have any other assets like a home or investment properties, and they, they've probably got no other income or significant other income. And a sole trade is going to be great for a while, especially if you're looking to save money um, as you're getting your business started up. But at some stage, as the business starts to take off, you need to think about getting a company. A partnership, just don't. Just don't, not even with your spouse. Just don't run a business through a partnership. You, there's basically the main reason is you are liable for the actions that your partner makes. So if you're doing business with someone else and you're both doing it, you know, you've got say, you say, okay, we're going to go into business together. You do it through a company, you don't do it through a partnership. So the other thing we hear a lot of is trusts. My personal view is that trusts are great for holding assets, shares, property, cash, but not for trading. Now, many accountants are recommending trusts because of some capital gains benefits that can occur if the business is sold at some point in the future. But if your business has working capital like inventory and debtors, which you know, your business does, then the tax costs on working capital will prevent you from ever getting to the point where it's valuable enough to sell. The other factor is trust law is based on case law that was developed through the courts since the 1600s. It is a complete minefield. So the main thing is trusts is they're passed through entities. So the trust itself is not taxable. 
So if the trust earns $100,000, it's got to distribute that $100,000 to the beneficiaries of the trust. And you can't hold it in that entity. And so you're going to get caught in a lot of cases with the money having to get distributed out to the beneficiaries and then loaned back to pay for working capital. So companies, I like companies, they're designed for trading businesses. Corporations law defines the rights of shareholders and directors, provide, providing them with a, a limitation of liability um, in respect of their actions as long as they don't trade insolvently. Everyone knows what a company is. They're, the, in my opinion, the ideal form for running a business. We can look at complex, more complex structures where, where you've got uh, companies owned by trusts. The, the company pays a fully frank dividend through the discretionary trust to the beneficiaries with the lowest uh, tax rates. We can also put in things like bucket companies in there to, to hold spare money if the business is at the point where it's actually making enough money to that you don't need to spend it all at the same time. Where it's important to regularly review your structures to make sure it's it's still appropriate for your business and your circumstances. Because the structure that you develop will be unique to you. you know, your personal profile, your assets that you have, the nature of your business and whether it's expanding or all those things go into what structure is appropriate for you. And that will change over time. As your business grows, you may need to think about adding in, uh, say, the shares owned in the company are owned by trusts rather than you personally. So we do all this for you. We look at the company structures. We advise we can go out and buy these companies and set them up for you. We provide you with business advice. Uh, as you can, may understand, I understand this Amazon business very well. And we can provide you with the business advice so that you can improve your cash flow and understand your profits properly. We can also do your, your, your tax returns and advice, and part of that includes a pre-year-end tax planning session where we work out the best way to distribute your money, whether it could be in wages or in superannuation or through dividends or retaining in the company. We'll also set up and manage your, your zero um, account. So we, we've got a special setup for just for Amazon businesses, a special chart of accounts that's specifically designed Plus, we've got videos and uh, standard operating procedures that you can just follow to get through that done. We've also got bookkeeping services where if you feel uncomfortable, you just don't like doing bookkeeping, then we can do it all for you. Every month, you get a, a full profit and loss, a discussion of your balance sheet, uh, the key KPIs for your business. So if you want to find out more about how, what we can help you there, Go to dolmanbateman.com slash Amazon and we can help you out there. You can see what's available. Now, if you haven't already downloaded it, um, I suggest you go to the cash flow forecast for Amazon e-commerce businesses. This is a fantastic spreadsheet uh, which will pro project both your profit and your cash flow out over the next year. You can change over 15 different variables. You can be, compare different products. So if you go to the Dolman Bateman dot com dot au amazon spreadsheet you can see that there